Vanessa from CoUni Conscious Universe and today I'm really excited because I'm here with Vitike. Vitike is an interstellar channel and artist most known for channeling an ET entity named Arjun from the Yayel Society. Mm -hmm. And this is what you guys get to experience with me today because Vitike is going to channel Arjun and I'm going to ask Arjun some very mind-blowing and expansive questions mm -hmm. about teleportation, shape-shifting, technology, healing, all sorts of very juicy stuff. So grab a cup of tea, get settled and get comfortable because this is going to get very, very interesting. For we are here and we thank you for the invitation of the co-creation of this here and now. Dear friend, how can we be of service to you? Hi. And hello to you. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say thank you so much for joining today. And it's just really nice to feel your presence. And it really fills me with this sense of gratitude. Thank you so much and you are welcome so much. <laughs> So the first question has to do with leaving our bodies and how we can travel to other dimensions and interact with other multidimensional beings uh, and return safely to our bodies. Well, let us begin with a little bit extra information around the idea of leaving the body. Mm -hmm. As most of you have been raised to think about this idea is that your soul or your essence or your you element that you recognize as being you is within the body but it really isn't the body is within your grander self so you're holding the body you're composing the idea of a body into what you call the physical dream so you're not actually leaving the body you're broadening your ability to perceive Okay. so that you can focus beyond the dimension that you're choosing to be focused in mainly while you use the body as your anchor point in the physical dimension do you understand okay and it also doesn't mean that you lose your senses because you may have heard of people who've had out-of-body experiences in that sense quote-unquote left the body still had all their senses yeah to use, they could see, hear, smell, touch. All these things are available to you while you're having these out-of-body experiences, which solely indicates that there is another body, always, you could say, at your availability as soon as you travel beyond that physical version, which you leave momentarily, more in the background of your attention, but you're still connected to it in that sense. You're still holding it in your bigger self while you're traveling in a broader spectrum and looking in different directions because now you're no longer limiting yourself to the idea of needing to see through the set of physical eyes that you've created for yourself. Do hmm. you understand? Yeah, so is it, so whilst I'm here as Vanessa... Um, whilst you're focusing in a physical body... Yes. And using it as your anchor point momentarily... Yes. And in addition to that, you have adopted the idea that you carry a name and that it would be <laughs> Vanessa. Yes. So whilst you're doing that, whilst you're playing that game, yes. Yes. So uh, it seems very like 3D dimensional. Like I'm, this is the only perspective that I have. But what you're saying is I can sort of zoom out and yes. still have this, yes. but then encompass can, other yes it can simultaneously coexist as it does anyway yeah. remember that the bigger part of you is in the non-physical you have never left you're just <laughs> with a segment of yourself quote unquote you're dreaming up that there is just this and when you say mm. there seems to be only this mm. to vanessa yeah mm. we understand that it seems to be that way yeah but this is the fun thing as you become more lucid in your dreams and you train a more conscious ability to travel out of body and so forth yeah 
the part that is the persona self, the Vanessa in your case, yeah. can get used to the multidimensional reality version of you, can mm. embrace the idea, the fact really, that you exist on several planes at once without feeling threatened by it. Mm. But the way you've been raised to believe and to think about your physical reality and in most occasions about the idea of death, mm -hmm. this is often surrounded with fears. Mm -hmm. So the rational mind in your Western society isn't cradled into or hasn't been soothed into a grander understanding of all that is, all that you are eventually. Mm. When it would be introduced with that information, as we are very excited to share with you mm -hmm. in many ways, and for yourselves has become much more available because your energy frequency has risen quite a bit and so has the entire planet with you, the version that we're communicating with right now, mm -hmm. which has made it more available for more of you to travel in a conscious manner beyond the idea of just the physical realm. So as this is accelerating, for most of you, you remember. And the physical mind, the persona self, the Vanessa part in your case, mm -hmm. gets to experience an aha sensation when that happens. Mm. And you understand what an aha sensation is, don't mm -hmm. you? Yep. When something clicks in <laughs> and you just get it yeah. and you feel like everything you formerly believed to be true, all of a sudden, hasn't necessarily been erased, but has transformed. And you can use that as a fundament to grow further onto, but you will see, I am a new me. You mm. will feel, I am a new me. Nothing will ever be the same again, because I understand I am multidimensional. Yeah. I reach beyond, quote unquote, this body. Yeah. I am more than this. Eventually, what you are growing into and soothing yourselves into is the realization that the dimension that you are currently believing to be living in is what you actually are. <laughs> you are it. That's pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> so I can, in a sense, be in several places at once. You are I in am. several places at once. Yes. You're, you're just not choosing to be focused on that uh. right now. And this is for the exploration and the benefit and the education, you could say, in, in a way, yeah. of the persona self. Yeah. It gets oh. to learn step by step because that's what you've chosen to do. With a segment of your grander self, you've chosen to have the idea of a linear experience because it can be so exhilarating, <laughs> exciting, not knowing what is around the corner next, yeah. right? So Vanessa is who you've conjured up to have that experience with, <laughs> or through, amazing. better said. Yeah. And through her, you get to discover to play this game in that particular way. Okay. But as you have gained more information that way, Vanessa, the persona part, is sending little, you could say, sonars, hmm. signals, a little bit like a submarine, to the surface level where the higher self is. And the higher self can be seen as a little bit of a hub between you and your soul. Yeah. And the higher self is where soul information gets translated into what you call imagination, intuition, inspiration. Mm. And in that pulsation, it is being sent down to the submarine. Wow. Which is underwater, which is the persona self, which is exploring on the bottom of the sea, you could say. Amazing. And every single time the persona self gets some of that, and uses it pragmatically, you act on your intuition, your inspiration, your imagination. Yeah. You let the higher self part know, I got this, I got this, I got this, and thank you. Mm. And so you're sending solar pulsations back up to the surface, you could say. Yeah. And it understands, as it transforms with you in every single here and now, you're a new persona self, it is a new higher self. Wow. It knows at some point, it understands, now you're ready for more. Mm -hmm and it will start sending you more. Wow, that's amazing. So there's constant interaction, a pulsation. Yeah. Bing, bing, <laughs> bing. <laughs> That's really cool. And then the, um, this, the, that aspect of me, that, this physical Vanessa. Yes, the persona self. The persona self really likes to learn and know the how-tos 
So I'm aware of what you're saying that it's possible to be in different places at once, or I already am. Yes, you are. Um, but how can I more, or how can we, people who want to explore this more, um, know how to tap into being at different places more in a more conscious way, like consciously making a decision to to place focus their attention somewhere well, else. Well, in a very casual way you're already doing this very often. When you tell a story of yourself, of something that you believe you have experienced in the past, right? Yeah. You share a memory. Yeah. And as you share the memory, you tap into that former version of yourself. And you begin mm. to feel that way again. At least a version of it. Yeah. So that already, in a sense, is you cross-connecting with a parallel, simultaneously existing dimension, wherein that version of you still exists. Okay. So as you remember something, but also as you fantasize into the quote unquote future, because there only is here and now. Mm -hmm. So from the present, you, you can make these seeming little school trips mm -hmm. to quote unquote other times, but actually simultaneously existing parallel dimensions. And to become more conscious of that, we would say sit, relax, or do something that you find enjoyable, maybe listen to a particular type of music. Mm -hmm. And tune in with what sensations you feel in your body as you fantasize about a version of you in the future or the past. And see how in-depth you can go with that. Okay. And we recommend to pick a memory or an imagination that feels good. Mm. And then play around with that. Just doing that can make you quite consciously aware of the fact that these other versions of you are already coexisting are already mm. there and are still there in this mm. case in your language okay thank you that's very helpful well thank you <laughs> uh, and um, one question has to do about death so we're all right ra raising our frequencies but when we rise to a higher frequency can we reach a point where we don't actually have to die at all Dying in the sense that you mean it right now, moving from the idea of physical into non-physical? Yes. At some point when you continue on your evolutionary journey, you will remain more non-physical. Yes. Mm. Your focus won't shift in that literal form from the idea of physical to non-physical. But you will still have awakening moments and that is really what it is. Okay. When you die, that's how we look at it. You just shift, you transfer. And with that transfer comes a sensation of immediate remembrance in most occasions. Mm. And it is that sensation which will remain to occur as you shift through the different dimensional realities. Okay. That you can evolve through. Okay. Because you will again and again feel like, oh, I remember I am more than this. Oh, I remember I am more than this. Oh, I remember I am more than this. <laughs> and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and even the one, eventually, if you would lift it all the way up to source, can be in awe with itself. Oh, wow. And surprised with its many, many faces. Amazing. Isn't it? Yes. We think so. <laughs> <laughs> And then just a little interesting question about, there's some stories about gurus who have passed over. Yes. Uh, but then their bodies afterwards, they didn't decompose. Yes. Um, how is that possible? And what does that mean? Well, this is a co-creation of those that perceive the actual body, you could say, and the person that has passed over. So okay. the intention of that person, most likely, was to quote-unquote, leave a certain imprint on humanity with the messages that he or she shared. Oh. Now, there are many ways to play around with the idea of not being forgotten. A mm. very efficient way is to just not have your body decomposed. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but it's not just the teacher or the guru that is creating that idea. Oh. It is everybody who observes the body. Because it is more so for the students that a physical body remains than for the one who has passed over. Yeah. Okay. So it helps to, to broaden broaden like people's perspective and, and expand their belief systems. Yes. To push them out of their comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. 
to help them remember that there is more between heaven and earth. Yeah. Some things that can't necessarily be explained scientifically. Yes. That are just and only traceable back to the energy wavelength of things. You see? Yes. And the infinite truth, you could say in this case, of certain messengers and messages is being reflected in that way. It's one way to reflect that. Now yeah. there, are, there can be more reasons why this is manifested and co-created in that way, but this is most common, the main one, when it comes to a guru mm -hmm. passing over and then having the body not decompose in that sense. Okay. One moment. There will be, as you evolve and progress through your time space reality, a moment where the idea of leaving behind, quote unquote, a physical vessel won't be necessary at all anymore. So we will keep the physical body for. We will stay in that physical body and then maybe that physical body will just continue to change as we kind of live forever? Is that there is that possibility, but then it won't be a physical body anymore. It ah. will gradually shift it naturally into non-physical. Okay. Or the physical aspect will just dissolve. Okay. And vaporize, you could say. Shift out of the reality framework of physicality. Yes. And the shifted over person will be inhabiting, quote unquote, mm -hmm. in your old language, <laughs> yeah. the energy body, which is what you're in every night when you dream, mm -hmm. which is what you're in even when you daydream while you're awake. Mm -hmm. Realizing that you're actually physically moving in another street if you're imagining yourself to be moving there, mm -hmm. also is a good exercise to become more aware of your multidimensionality because since there is no time and space, really, <laughs> what's the difference between you sitting over there and walking over there? It's just a matter of focus, isn't it? But you're already over there. So everything is here and now. There is no time, there is no space. So that must mean you are already everywhere. Wow. You're just allowing in, in any given moment as you choose your pathway, through this physical dream, where you believe it to be at. Okay. But as you're imagining yourself walking in another street while you're sitting here in your home, a version of you is walking in that street, and that may come with certain sensations. This is a good way to practice OBEs or teleportation, even. Ooh, this is also... To begin to tune in with that. Yeah. To realize it and to see how much information you can allow to flow through your body here, through your system here, in your awareness mm -hmm. of the idea of your body, mm -hmm. while you're imagining that it is actually somewhere else. And also, we know that many of you have done this, when you're considering a particular decision to make in your life, a job to take yes or no, a journey to make yes or no, mm -hmm. Imagining yourself there is often what helps you make the decision. Yeah. And as you tune in with that future version of you that has actually decided to go do that, it will send you information back, quote unquote, it reflects that back to you, mm -hmm. which if you're fine tuned enough and you allow it to flow in, it's always given, it just depends on your capability to allow it in. Okay. If you are sensitive enough for yourself to allow that through, you've trained that sensitivity to allow that flow through you, then you can take from that reflection your cue, whether it will be a fun thing or not so much, to go and do that. Okay. To go and take that job, to go and make that journey. Yes. But it's very critical in this particular case, in this particular example, that you tune in with yourself and sense into the difference energy frequencies of things that the mind may come up with in that moment mm. and that actual future version quote unquote of you reflecting back to you what you may need to know okay is this also where there's a fine balance between what the ego might be insisting on yes um, and by ego, when we say rational mind, we mean yes. what you also call ego, okay. but also persona self. It's all the same filter yeah. in that sense. Okay. Okay. 
That's very interesting. And thank you for, for tuning into the topic of teleportation because this is actually also the next question. How synchronous of you. I know, of us. Yes. <laughs> uh, because the next question is, how can we teleport? Which you've sort of already answered. But I guess, so for example, if whilst I'm here having this conversation with you, let's say at the same time, there is another person I want to be with right now. Yes. Can I be there with that person and here with you? Simultaneously. Sim yeah, simultaneously. You can be consciously aware of being at both of these places at once. At some point in your evolution, we see you can get there. And okay. some people are capable of doing that right now. But where you are right now, for most of you, one of the two version of yourself <laughs> will most likely be in repose or in a meditative state, if you understand what we're saying by that. Oh, so that, that other version of me that I would like to tune into and be right now yes. is in a meditative state. More no. likely this version, so that you, quote unquote, can broaden your awareness. Because for now, what we see for most of you is that you need a very strong fundament to have that double Mm. perception play out of which is why you usually do these kind of things while you dream okay because the body in that moment doesn't ask your attention yeah doesn't okay. distract you yeah so where you are right now most likely you would be in a meditative position and then focus yourself actually up the ladder you could say mm -hmm. to the higher self to the soul self mm -hmm. and from there split off mm -hmm to the other version with the person that you would like to be with. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting us know that you're so distracted, by the way. Okay. <laughs> no offense. I had to play it out a little bit in my mind. We're just playing out with you as well. <laughs> Thank you. So from the soul self, you, many versions of you, an infinite amount of versions of you, is with many different people right now. Mm. And you will be connecting with one of those strings or extensions and consciously allowing in to where you are right now the awareness of you, that version of you, being with another person right now. Okay. And you would be having the conscious awareness of you, or two versions of you, yeah. the idea of you, mm -hmm. having two different experiences in two places at once. Wow. Yes, this can be done. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and at some point you would be, or you could be, active in both realities at once as well. Oh. But right now we see that the first step would to be to take it from a meditative state, okay. most likely. Okay. Or like you already do when you're sleeping. Yes. I guess we need to practice this. <laughs> you don't need to do anything. Or, this will naturally yeah. occur for you. Oh. And you can practice it if that's something you're excited about. Yeah. Up to you. Okay. Great. Um, Teleportation in short. Yes. Is you remembering and fully understanding that everything is here and now. Mm. Because if you truly understand that, then you know wherever you can imagine as another location, mm -hmm. you must already be there. Or yeah. some aspect of you must already be part of that. Yes. So you just focus into that. Okay. And you be there. <laughs> you make it sound very simple <laughs> and easy. Eventually, this will be one of the more challenging parts when humanity comes to soothe themselves into all of these bits and pieces of information around your grander self. Mm. The challenge will be that it has always been that simple and that you didn't see it. Ah, uh, yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. And you've had a lot of fun along the way, haven't you? <laughs> yes, this is fun. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, so that touched upon being at several places at once, um, but also, and this kind of leads into, well, I guess, no, that's not really shape shifting, but let's say I want to be in a different location, like this version of me does not want to physically take my body through the journey of getting to another place or going on plane flights or Why trains. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't you like flying? Not always. Can't you think of fun people that you might meet on the plane? 
I guess so. A nice movie that you may never forget you saw on the plane. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I do have enjoyable journeys, physical journeys. Okay. Sometimes. Okay. But sometimes very long physical journeys can be very physically draining. So the idea and the thought of skipping that is very appealing. Well, then you're <laughs> resisting the idea of time that you're creating to make a particular journey in. You see, when you're truly loving something, we know you know this. When you're truly excited about something, time seems to fly, doesn't it? <laughs> Why don't you have time fly with you while you're on the plane? You can both fly together. Ah, oh, perfect answer. And it won't feel as if 10 hours have passed <laughs> at all. It may feel like three or four or even less mm. because you were having so much fun just doing whatever you like doing or whatever you feel you can tune in with within yourself so that you maintain an energy frequency or in that dreading yeah. of time passing isn't being noted at all because it's simply not relevant for you. That's true. That's helpful. You can play with that if you like. I will remember that on my okay. next trip. Okay. <laughs> Thank How you. How exciting. <laughs> um, and that leads on to the next topic, which is shape shifting. Yes. Um, so is it possible? Well, we know that anything is possible, but it would be very interesting to top, tap into the topic of changing our physical appearance and how that's possible and if it's possible for us now in, in this current time. This shape shifting as it is meant or presented to you in many movies or fairy tales, mm. though it can be done, doesn't occur literally the way it is often represented to you. Okay. It is more close to the idea that we have just previously explained to you, where you move through locations or the idea of that mm -hmm. with the body that you know to have by just thinking of yourself being somewhere else mm -hmm. and remembering again that some aspect of you is already there so a shape shifter for instance in a humanoid form may choose to appear as a crow in a different dimension to another human right do you follow along so far yes in order to do that, this person will rise even higher on the ladder or dive even deeper into themselves, as we just explained with the little example. Mm -hmm. From the higher self to the soul to the oversoul level, from which at least some animal and most likely also a crow will have an extension lifeline into a physical reality where they wish to meet the other person as a crow. Mm. And they'll focus into that okay. being which is still its own individual crowd, yeah. as is the version of you that you're tuning in with that already exists in the future in order to help yourself make a decision in the now, okay. is their own person. Yes. Is their own individual. And you will never literally become them because you are you. So it is your focus, your essence, you could say, your source you, the light of you that runs through the persona self projector. Mm -hmm. that just chooses to run its light from a different angle through a different entity momentarily so that you can perceive that. Okay. Do you understand what's going on there, what the difference is? So, but then, so that sounds a bit more like I can So it's not me. like your physical body warps into the shape of a crown. Ah, I see, yes. That's the difference. Yeah. You're simultaneously existing with the crow and aware yeah. of its beingness. Yeah. As you're allowing a good part of your consciousness to flow through it in that moment. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and so does that also mean that, for example, if I, if, if we, let's say, if, we, if I want to change a physical appearance or if someone, one of our questions is if we can remove a tattoo, for example. On the body that you believe to be inhabiting right now. Yes. Where you are right now. Okay. So on your earth, appearances. <laughs> play a big part 
in the game that you're playing amongst yes. each other. You have decided to hang all kinds of meanings onto that, which often makes us laugh, <laughs> that you're playing around with in order to get to know yourselves better. Mm. Even the idea of tattoos or putting ornaments on your body or beautifying it in whatever way in your culture yeah. is representative to do that by uh -huh. is a way for you to make a statement of who you think or believe yourself to be. Mm. So as long as that statement energy is connected to it in the relevancy, with the relevancy, the weight you could say, the momentum that it has in your reality right now, it is less likely, it's possible, but less probable that that will shift to such a degree that you can just change your mind and it will be gone overnight, mm. the tattoo, or in a second, it could be. But you have the possibility, all, every single one of you, within you, to shift and slightly alter your own physical body in that way. To basically shift from a version of you that has decided to get a tattoo, yeah. and then feel sorry about it and then dreading it, all the rest of the way yeah. to a version of you that decided to never get that tattoo. Okay, so is it kind of similar to the Krau example where you, you I, I wouldn't be changing my physical appearance, I would be shifting, shifting to another, version, to another of you, version, which has a different history. Okay. In that particular one aspect that he or she never decided to get that tattoo in the first place. Okay. Okay. And you see, as long as you wish to change something that you do believe took place, you're actually pushing against one of your own belief systems, which creates a type of friction, uh, which makes it less possible for you to actually make and then manifest that, that shift. That makes sense. You see? Yes. So alignment is a very, very yes. big... Yes. Uh, and a bigger understanding of what time-space reality really is. And once yes. you understand you're actually the dimension that you're living in, you can Pick a different route for yourself that you have then walked and you will see the results, quote unquote, of that. Wow. You will manifest a body because results implies, again, linear linearity, mm. which is what you create by the grace of your belief systems. Mm. But you will shift really into an entirely new body that fits that storyline in that moment so that you can continue to play it out mm -hmm. as it would linearly fit to the rational mind or the persona self. Okay. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, and then playing around with this, with the shape shifting and applying it to healing. Yes, very similar thing. Very similar thing. So, for example, if someone has lost a limb. Yes. Can they simply, theor theoretically, just tune into another version of themselves that didn't, for example, have the car accident or whatever that caused them to lose a limb. Yes. And... It's possible, though, like we said before, less probable. Because yeah. your environment and the momentum of their belief system that you're co-creating together may impact the persona self's belief systems. So if everybody tells you that's absolutely 100% nonsense and impossible, mm -hmm. it will be a lot less likely that you manifest mm -hmm. that for yourself because there will be less of an allowing energy frequency yeah. for that to manifest through. Okay. Even though it is possible. Yes. Yes. And there have been <laughs> stories of children, most often, who lost a limb or a finger, for instance. Mm -hmm that started to grow back mm. until people were, what's going on here? How is this possible? Yeah. And the kids would just be convinced that that's what happens when you lose a limb, that oh. it will grow back. Wow. Until the parents say, this is impossible. Oh. And then it stops growing. Wow. I guess collective beliefs sort of play a big role yes. as well. So, and These are all layers of the games that you're playing. Yes. Very fascinating. So in the instances where people have been able to do in, like incredible instant healing, yes, is that because their belief is so strong that it transcends any limiting beliefs that the collective might have? We would rather say that their allowance was so grand uh, that they could let that flow through them. Wow. That's because if you say strong beliefs, it still sounds a little bit like pushing. Resistance. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah, it does. So yes, they were so open to receive, mm. so relaxed, so in the here and now, so 
okay also with what is. Because only if you don't fight what is, you can allow in transformation of that. Wow. That's very helpful. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, and then I think we're going to move over to... Well, continuing on the, on the healing, healing um, theme. Um, you've said before that we cannot perceive anything that we're also at least partially the vibration of ourselves. You can't perceive anything that you're not also yeah, not. at least partial on the frequency wavelength of. Yes. Yes, we've said that. Yes. Um, a lot of people find it disturbing when they're, they're looking outside, uh, for example, watching the news, or they see something uncomfortable, or people dying, or something that does not feel good, or natural disasters, for example. Okay. Is there a way to look at external information without it causing so much tension or guilt within yourself? So being able to perceive something that is negative, in a sense, without feeling does that does the question make without sense? Without feeling responsible for it. Um, so what you're saying is, within the light of the grander understanding, that you can't perceive anything that you're not at least partially also. Yes. On the yes. Of. Yes. Exactly. So Thank you. What you're asking is really, is it possible for us to take it a little le less personal? Uh, yes. All of that. Yes. Yes. Of course. It absolutely is. Okay. It is because you make it personal that it feels so out of tune. So it is only by the grace of your judgment, really, of the thing that you're observing, that you begin to feel so out of whack or guilty, like you're saying, mm. because of it. So you contain everything, you know, or most of you say you understand, at least mentally, that eventually you are all that is. Yes. So if you turn on the television, don't be surprised about what you see there also being <laughs> part of you. So. Like we said again, the entire dimension you believe to be living in is you, eventually. Mm -hmm. So, you contain all that. Can you love yourself, even containing that? Mm. Because that is the true transformation. Then you put in a different response. You don't judge what you observe. Yes. And also, just to smooth it out a little bit, you're not literally that in that moment. Mm. You're just tuning in with an aspect of your grander self to see if, in fact, it triggers something in who you believe to be right now. Mm. And as long as it does, you will send yourself over and over and over all types of versions that may have the same triggering response within you. Now, that's a loving thing because all of this is, you could say, quote unquote, send to you through the higher self, which knows exactly what it is you need. Oh. It knows what you want, but it gives you what you need. <laughs> yeah. So it will give you what you need. And if you need to look at a certain energy frequency a little bit closer in yourself mm -hmm. in order to transform it into something that is more in alignment with the higher self, you will send yourself little examples, little nudges, little pushes, you could say. Mm. And it's, this can be a person that makes a remark about you that you don't have to take personal at all. It can be something that you see in the news. It can be something that you overhear on the street other people talking about mm. that seems upsetting or that you feel obligated to re respond to in a confirming matter, which yeah. is something that happens a lot in your society. Oh, yes, yes, that is indeed <laughs> very, very bad. Yeah. But if that doesn't actually make you feel good, or doesn't actually stand in alignment with what you call is your integrity, mm -hmm. then you will feel out of whack because your actions and what you're feeling don't align. Yeah. So keeping a straight face with the news is hard for some people. Mm. On the other hand, if your face turns all sad or angry, then these emotions are good news too, we would say, mm -hmm. because they're letting you know there's still something that wants to be seen. Mm. So feel it by all means. 
do not suppress it. Yeah. Feel it. Feel that there is a distance between who you're experiencing yourself to be right now with the belief systems that you're choosing to buy into mm -hmm. and the version of you that you're deep within yourself know you really are. Mm. Feel the discrepancy. Feel the awkwardness, the gap between the two. And then investigate further what is creating that actual gap by asking yourself the one by now famous question what is it that i'm choosing to believe to be true that is making me feel the need to feel this way mm. and then you will figure out what is causing this gap okay. and you can transform it and bridge it and become one with what you really believe to be true what you know is you you say amazing does that help that helps a lot thank okay. you so much well thank you so much <laughs> that leads us to a very nice roundup for a break yes uh, thank you so much and uh, we'll have a couple more questions after the break looking forward but also backward to it yeah love you so much love you Ah. <laughs> ah, welcome back. Yay. Oh, thank you. Yeah.